A number of missiles, tens of missiles, have been launched from Iran onto an airbase in, in Iraq, an airbase that houses American forces. I want to bring in an expert right now, Besma Mamani. We've had her on the show many times. Hi, Professor Mamani. She's with the University of Waterloo. Uh, Professor, what are you hearing at this point and, and your initial reaction to this breaking news? Yeah, so uh, Ain al-Assad base, which is uh, northern part of Iraq, this is uh, probably the base where many people feel was where uh, the missile was launched from uh, to kill Soleimani, the IRGC general. And so we're hearing that up to some, some the ranges from 30 to 40 uh, missiles uh, from Iran were directed to uh, the uh, Ain al-Assad base. This has been confirmed by the semi-official news agency and then again uh, verified and said by the uh, IRGC spokespeople. And now we're getting the Americans actually confirming that, yes, uh, there were some missiles that were hit. Um, it sounds like initially first reports are six. But again, it's a developing story, and we're just kind of following and seeing what's happening. So let's set the context here, because we have been for the past few days hearing from Iran that retaliation was coming. Uh, is this the kind of retaliation that you would say is, is, is expected? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't think that the uh, Iranians would want to hit uh, the Americans in the United States specifically. Uh, their bases in Iraq make it, frankly, a lot easier to hit, uh, just logistically speaking. Uh, and of course, gets Americans upset enough and, and certainly makes the message clear that there's retaliation. I think the big question will be, were the American troops um, kind of warned to leave in advance. I mean, the, the IRGC and the Iran the Iranian um, regime don't necessarily want to have, to be honest with you, you know, American blood on their hands, because that would just escalate things even further. But they had to avenge his death in some way to end it in terms of this tit for tat. So we'll have to see if there are reports of any death and casualty coming out of the U.S. base. Uh, this is a base that includes both Iraqi forces and American forces. Um, so who is going to be injured in this will be, I think, the big question in terms of escalation. What do you think about the significance of the base being in Iraq, uh, and particularly given all of the um, discussion and all of the, the strain and tensions involving Iraq and the troops, the multiple international troops that, that, that are based in Iraq right now? Well, you know, one optic to me that I think is really, really quite relevant is the fact that this is the Iraqi base that Donald Trump visited. Um, so the fact that he visited that particular base, and, and many people may not know this, but he kind of did it in the middle of the night with no warning to the Iraqi official government. In fact, the Iraqi government itself was quite upset with Donald Trump coming in the middle of the night and visiting this base and not even making you know, a state visit to the capital and talking to anybody who is Iraqi. But I think the optics of that is really very important for the Iranians. That is a way of saying, you know, we can get you. But again, uh, th thus far, uh, as much as it sounds escalatory, if it ends at that, um, <laughs> we could all have, you know, like, you know, uh, feel relieved because in fact, what is worrisome is if they were to go further than that. So Again, uh, this is not, I think, uh, you know, the, the end of, 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 of all times uh, if it ends here. But if Americans are killed at the base, it becomes extremely worrying because we know that Donald Trump does react to particularly uh, U.S. Uh, soldiers and citizens being killed. He said it several times in the past that that is our red line. And so if that happens, then I think we're really going to see an escalation of targeting Iran specifically, because I don't think Donald Trump can let that one go. Yeah, how much, I guess, right now rests on how the U.S. reacts? And again, I'll stress to our viewers that uh, the reports are very preliminary, that we are we are hearing and we are reading that a number of missiles have been launched from Iran into an, uh, a base, a military base in Iraq that houses American troops, where American troops are stationed. How important or how much of this rests uh, on what the Americans do next? I think that's a big part of it. Again, this is a tit for tat. This did not start with the killing of Soleimani. This was, you know, uh, a number of months of escalation. Um, and so it's all about this kind of what we call this, you know, level of deterrence uh, reached where uh, each party can feel satisfied they've done their part, but not actually going too far to cross, you know, again, we use the word red lines a lot, but that's really what it is. Of course, uh, for the Iranians, uh, Soleimani is more than just a top general. I think this is what was the miscalculation of the Americans. Now, do the Iranians uh, feel that uh, hitting a U.S. base with no servicemen killed is enough to show the message they're displeased? And I think that would be enough for Trump to not want to react 
further. We we'll, might hear some you know, loud talk, but we won't necessarily see more of a reaction. But if American service people were killed uh, in that base, it would be extremely difficult for Donald Trump to end it there. And then the question is, what comes next? And that's what we've been you know, really sitting on the edge of our seats, all of us who've been watching this escalate for several months now, this tit for tat. You mentioned uh, sort of the the uh, reaction or the way in which this is being perceived, or particularly General Soleimani is being perceived, and perhaps sort of the, I think for a lot of us who have now started to read so much about him, it's surprising that uh, that the reaction is what it has been. Why, why do you think in Iran particularly so many, we've seen the images, for example, of all those people storming the streets. Why, why do you think the reaction has been what it is? Well, I mean, I want to first start off saying that this, this man has a lot of blood on his hands. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's no uh, sugarcoating the reality of what he was. Uh, he was a war criminal in my eyes and in so many people's of, you know, victims' eyes. But the reality is uh, there are hardliners who do support the regime, who do support the IRGC. And Soleimani does have this almost folk heroism about him. You know, he's seen as this very humble person. Um, some of his actions, you know, he's not that... Uh, let's say, very, you know, boisterous type of general. He doesn't fit the image, if you will. He's very humble, very pious. And uh, like it or not, people like that do have a lot of respect, uh, not just, I think, in, in Iran, but across the region. Um, he was very smart. I think tactfully, uh, on tactics, I should say, and logistics, he was very bright uh, and intelligent. And so he's not easily replaced, even though he, you know, his role has been filled, if you will, but he does offer more than that. And, and in a time in Iran where there's a lot of corruption and the IRGC is very corrupt and certainly the regime is very corrupt, there was something of almost putting him on a pedestal that somehow he was different than the rest. Um, again, these are, these are myths and mythologies, but they matter, uh, even though, frankly, again, as I said, he may be a war criminal in our eyes and certainly has a lot of blood on his hands, but back home in certain quarters, and not all Iranians, you know, are um, idolizing him. On the contrary, you know, we just had reports of maybe up to 1,500 Iranian protesters killed by the IRGC. Many Iranians themselves have suffered at the hands of this man. But in the eyes of so many patriots, um, so many of those IRG supporters, he is above, frankly, even the Supreme Leader, even um, the President Rouhani. I mean, it, it doesn't even compare. He was the most popular figure based on very narrow kind of opinion polls that you could get in Iran um, in that country, and that matters. Okay, I want to bring in another expert. I believe he's uh, ready to join us by Skype as well. Tomah Juneau no, no, of the University of Ottawa. Is he there, Professor Juneau? Okay, he's on the phone. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, Professor Romani. I apologize. Um, uh, let's get back to, uh, I just want to refresh for our viewers exactly what this breaking news is. There are reports that a number of missiles, tens perhaps of missiles, have been launched from Iran into an air, onto a military base in Iraq, uh, a base where American troops are stationed. We do not know. We have no information about the potential number of casualties or if there are any at all. I think, Professor Juneau, are you, uh, are you ready now? Do you hear me okay? I can hear you. Hi, Professor. Thanks for joining us. I, I just wanted to get your take, your reaction to uh, to this breaking news. My first reaction is that uh, a lot of us, and I have to say myself included, we were wrong in the sense that I, I did not dismiss the possibility of this happening, but I viewed it as a, as a lower probability. Um, a lot of us uh, predicted that Iran's response uh, to uh, the, the, the assassination of Soleimani would be more indirect, more asymmetrical, would come farther down the road, would uh, you know, come through cyber attacks, through targeting Saudi Arabia and Israel, for example. Uh, and, and a lot of us were thinking that something as uh, direct and hard as what we're seeing right now was rather uh, far less likely because uh, there's a serious chance of a, of, of a U.S. response now. And, um, you know, the, in a scenario of escalation, which is, which is pretty much what we're in right now, um, in, you know, in a direct military confrontation, Iran loses against the U.S. Does it depend? And, and quickly, actually, I want to bring in uh, the White House statement. I'm just seeing on the wires a statement on these attacks. We are aware of the reports of attacks on U.S. facilities in Iraq. The president has been briefed and is monitoring the situation closely and consulting with his national security team. You can see the tweet from the press secretary right there. Uh, Professor Junot, does it, Professor Mamani was touching on the fact that it might depend a lot on if there are casualties and that might uh, inform the U.S. response. 
Well, you know, if, if you read and, and listen to what President Trump has been saying, not only in the last few days, but over the last few months, he has always been very clear in, in talking to Iran, but in general, that his red line was American personnel in particular. So you're right to say that, um, you know, whether there are American casualties or not does make a huge difference. There are reports of American casualties, but they're not confirmed. So we should be careful with that. That being said, uh, you know, there's an issue of American assets here. It is true that when Iran shot down an American drone in 2019, a few months ago, uh, Trump cho chose not to retaliate. Um, but in this case, the provocation is pretty strong on, on Iran's side. I think what we're seeing here is Iran basically playing chicken uh, with the U.S. to use a, a you know a common a, a common term, in the sense that Iran has made the assessment for three years now that Trump, as you know, as much as his rhetoric is is blusterous, uh, he does not want to get the U.S. bogged down in a new Middle East war. Right. Um, so Iran is making the bet here that Trump's response will be restrained because he wants to avoid getting bogged down in a, in another war.